So um, it's about five after six my time, and I know three hours back on the West Coast and some other times, but I want to welcome all of you who have decided to join me tonight. And uh, I want to start off uh, in the book of 3rd John, if you have your Bible, 3rd John. And when you get to 3rd John, I want you to look at verse 2, 3rd John, verse 2. Um, now, here's one of the things I want you to think about. Growing up in the church, and a lot of you who've been in the church, you know, a year, 10 years, 20 years, 30, how long you've been there. We've spent a lot of time talking about, you know, spiritual truths, and we, and we should. And we've also spent time talking about, you know, God wants to heal you, and that is so absolutely true. Amen. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. But I've come to recognize that we've not spent enough time talking about the emotions. Uh, we all have emotions. But sometimes those emotions have, have you. And that's when the problem comes. When, when emotions are directing your life, when emotions are no longer under your authority or are no longer being controlled by you, then those emotions are going to redirect your life away from the word of God. And so God wants you to have emotions and those emotions to, to, to bring about great joy in your life, but he never intended emotions to have you. So what happens to a person when they cannot control their emotions? They will attempt to try to control another person. I mean, think about that. When, when there are lots of things that go on when you cannot control your emotions emotions. Here's God's plan. God's plan is for us to master life, not to be mastered by life. And everybody, whether they want to admit it or not, where you are today, negatively or positively, good or bad, may be, just may be because you're not aware of this truth that you can control how you feel that you can control your emotions, that you can harness them, master them, and you can achieve emotional stability. Now, how does this work? You know, circumstances are real, and the Bible says, you know, in this world you're gonna have tribulation, so you're gonna have trouble. <laughs> you're not gonna be able to avoid that. If somebody says, well, I'm saved, well, the Bible even says uh, that the, for the righteous you shall have persecution there will be affliction come as a result of you being righteous. But here's the thing I want you to understand, that these emotions, they don't have to govern and control your life. Um, I use an illustration so people can really get where I'm coming from. Let's say a friend of yours purchased a brand new car. He was driving down the road, somebody came behind him, hit him, uh, in their car, he jumps out of the car because now he's emotional because the circumstance at hand has now triggered a negative emotion. So he, he jumps out the car, he, um, he goes and begins to yell at the guy that hit him. He got so emotional, he actually hit the guy. Well, about the time he hit the guy, the policeman came up behind him and the policeman saw him assaulting the guy. So the policeman arrested him. It happened to be on a Friday. His boss just told him that day before he left work, if you're late for work again, we're going to let you go. His wife told him on Thursday, if you lose another job, I'm going to go. And so he's in jail. And of course, now that he's in jail, the judge won't be in until Tuesday. So he's not able to go to work. He loses his job. His wife is gone because he lost his job. And he's sitting in jail asking himself this question. How did I get here? Well, I'll tell you how he got there. He could not harness correctly and control his emotions. And as a result, his emotions took him to that place. He's in jail because he would not take authority over his emotions. Now, that's just a simple example. But how often throughout the day are you allowing your emotions to take you somewhere you don't want to be? Uh, one of the things I discovered is that self-control or temperance, which is a fruit of the spirit, Self-control or temperance um, 
it's, it's a gift of God to be able to control your emotions because God will use temperance and self-control to direct your life in the place where he's designed for it to be. So right now look at this. If you are out of control, those emotions will move you away from the blessings. Those emotions will move you away from the will of God for your life. If you're in control, God will use it to direct your life towards the prepared purpose or the planned purpose that God has for your life. So I think one of the things I wanted to make clear tonight is that, listen, we're not talking about becoming emotionless. That's not what we're saying. We're not saying, well, you know, if you are experiencing bad emotions, become emotionless. No, we're trying to show you that circumstances will arise and some, some of those circumstances will be bad and some of those circumstances will trigger negative emotions. What, we, what I want you to hear is just because a circumstance triggered a negative emotion doesn't mean that that negative feeling has to take you away from God's plan, God's will, and God's blessings for your life. When the negative emotions are triggered, I am saying to you that you have the authority to achieve emotional stability. You can change the way you feel. There is a choice. You can change how you feel. Uh, I think that's the, that's the place I want people to really understand because you've heard things like this. You've heard things like, um, well, I can't help the way I feel. Uh, well, they did this to me and you know, I feel I'm angry and I just can't help the way I feel. And first of all, that is just not the truth. You have authority over your negative emotions. I, I wanna share this with you. I, I put this in some notes because I, I want you to see how important this is. Um, what happens here is some believers believe that the negative circumstances uh, have to have a corresponding response. In other words, so if the, if the circumstance is negative, then the response has got to be negative. And then you have some believers who just see emotions as a response and not a choice. So most people say, well, this situation caused this or triggered this negative emotion. It's the response, I can't help it. And I am saying, no, you still have a choice. And so yet and still there are people who believe that you, know, you can't control your emotions. So if, if I were to just give you the thought of the day, then today's current thinking is that emotions are just something that happens and well, you just can't do anything about it. Now I want you to hear me loud and clear. If this is true, then most likely emotions have contributed to you ended up in places, in destinations that you didn't want to be in and that you didn't like and that you just wish you had never ended up in those places. So until you can get to the place, uh, let me get this Bible here, until you can get to the place, thank you, where you can control your emotions or get to the place where you can believe that you can control your emotions, they're gonna continue to ruin you. And Satan, what he does, he's gonna ride your bad negative feelings like a, like a wave and just surf you all the way completely away from the will of God for your life. And you'll find yourself spending most of your life rerouting, rerouting, you know, the thing on your car, just rerouting. And, and, and maybe you're like one step away from the perfect will of God for your life or the plan of God for your life for that season. And you keep missing the mark because you don't think you can control your negative emotions. And a man that's out of control if he can't control his emotions, he's going to attempt to try to control other people. And so, you know, if you know somebody that's controlling, uh, maybe you have a controlling spouse or a controlling friend, uh, the, the first indication, the first thing that should come to your thinking is that they can't control their emotions. And if you watch them when they're tempted right, you'll see that they can't control their emotions. So what am I saying? I thought it was so important to do this tonight to let you guys know it is time to take authority 
over our emotions, that I don't know what percentage of your life is being controlled by your negative emotions. But I am saying, you know, there's something big on the line. The will of God's on the line for your life. The plan of God's on, your line, on, the, on, on the line for your life. There's, there's some destination that God has planned for you to reach and you keep, you know, I don't know why I'm not there. It's because you won't take authority over your negative emotions. You have to assume um, responsibility and accountability for how you feel. Yeah, but Brother Dollar, somebody close to me died. And I feel real bad and I can't help it. No, it's a choice. You can harness your emotions. It is a choice. So between, you know, what I'm saying tonight and, of course, we'll make the series available to you uh, once I finish it. I'm trying to produce a series of teachings and some reading material and things so I can share with my partners and friends so that you can get and gain a revelation just like I have. So now you know where we're going. So let me take you to uh, third John and let me show you some scriptures to show you where we're going here. And, and of course, as always, if you have questions about some of the things, you can go ahead and start getting them and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and take them as they come. So in, in 3 John, uh, verse 2, he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. Beloved, I pray that you prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Now, what he says here is that he says, hey, uh, here's God's will for your life. I want you to prosper or be successful. So that's another way to say that. I want you to prosper or be successful uh, in every way. The Amplified says, I want you to be successful in every way. Let me read this for you uh, in 3 John because you have to know the will of God in order to release your faith for it. So in 3 John, he says in the Amplified, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way. So you need to know it's God's will for you to have success in every way. Man, that's awesome because we bump into circumstances that tell us we can only be successful in one way. No, the scripture says you can be successful in every way. He says, and that your body may keep well. Hey, that's, enough. that's the will of God, your body to keep well. So if sickness attacks your body, you need to know it's the will of God for my body to keep well. Well, why do I need to know the will of God for my life? So when you're getting something in your life that doesn't line up with the will of God, you can resist it. When you know for a fact that God wants you to be successful in every way, and it doesn't seem like you're excess, successful in some ways, you resist that and say, no, it's God's will for me to be successful in every way. Or, you know, he says that your body keep well, and then when something attacks your body, you're like, no, no, that's not the will of God. It's not the will of God. In the name of Jesus, God's will is for, me to, to, for my body to keep well. So you resist it. So what most people do is when they don't know the will of God, they don't, resist, they don't actively resist it and just kind of let it happen. Then, you know, the same thing is true where your, your feelings and emotions are concerned. When you, when you go around thinking you can't control your, uh, your feelings, you won't resist those bad feelings, those negative emotions. But when you know that it is God's will for you to have authority over your emotions, and when, they, when they're negative or some circumstance triggered a negative emotion, you stand up and you actively resist it, and it doesn't take authority over your life. And, but then he says in um, the Amplified, he says that your body keep well. And here's the point I want you to get, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. So what he says here in 3 John verse 2, as goes your soul, so goes your life. Well, what does that have to do with how I feel? Well, remember, man is a spirit. He possesses a soul. He lives in a physical body. Please understand, you are not your body, you are not your soul. You are a spirit being. You don't have a spirit, you are a spirit, you have a soul. Now, your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your soul is made up of your thinker, your feeler, and your chooser. And uh, it's made up of your, your emotions and your feelings. And so, you know, as goes your emotions, as goes your feeling, as goes your soul, so goes your life. So goes your life. So now you can pause and think about how your life and where your life has been going. And I guarantee you, your emotions and how you feel will match the direction that you're going right now. 
to me, that's breakthrough revelation, man. It's like, okay, let me examine my soul. Let me examine my emotions and feelings. And if I can take authority over my emotions and feelings and get the, those feelings to, to be godly emotions and to line up with the word of God, because I'll show you a little later on, that spiritual mindedness that comes from getting in the word of God is going to direct your bad emotions to being good, mature emotions. But man, if you can look at your life and it's going in a direction you don't want to go in, and you know right now that, you know, your emotions may be responsible for moving you in that direction. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's amazing. So you now can do something about it and you now see why you can have authority over your, over your emotions. Um, so it's going to be, it's really going to be left up to you. Let me, let me give you a, a definition of, of emotions right here. What are emotions? They are feelings, feelings on the inside caused or triggered by pain or pleasure, painful circumstances, painful situations, pain or pleasure to move you in a direction. Emotions are feelings on the inside caused by pain or pleasure to move you in a direction. Now think about it. If emotions are designed to move you in a direction, guess what the devil's going to hop on to try to keep you out of the will of God, to keep you out of the blessings, to keep you out of healing? He's going to hop on how you feel. And you can't allow your life to be governed by how you feel. Because if you allow your life to be governed by how you feel, when those feelings turn negative, they are now going to take you down a negative path. If you allow your life to be governed by the word of God, which never changes, and when your feelings are negative, you allow the word of God to change how you feel, Again, it's going to take you down a path that you want to go. You know, I guess one of the things I just, I don't want you to have to deal with or for us to continue to hear, uh, well, ain't nothing I can do about it. And I'm, I'm showing you, yes, you can. I'm showing you, well, I ain't got no friends. Cause your, 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 your emotions. I mean, you're, you're, you got all kinds of issues with your emotions when you're around people that don't want to be around you. And, you know, they're not going to tell you, but I'm telling you. I mean, that's why, we're, that's why we're live tonight, so I can tell you maybe the problem is in the area of your emotions and, and in the area of your feelings. Let, let, me, let me try another perspective here. Um, some of you remember years ago, I wrote the book, um, uh, Eight Steps to Create the Life You Want. And in that book, I put something called the anatomy of life and eight steps to the destination of where you want to get to. And so the first step, as you, as you can remember, is whatever you expose yourself to, whatever your exposure is, what, what, whatever you expose yourself to will determine how you think. How you think will determine how you feel. How you feel will determine the decisions you make. The decisions you make will determine the actions you take. The actions you take will determine the habits you create. Those habits will then create your character and then your character will bring you to your destination. So where are, wherever you are today is a result of that eight step progression I just showed you. So let's look at that again. What are you exposing yourself to? What are you spending the most of your time doing? Whatever you're exposing yourself to the most, whoever you hanging around, think about it. Who are you hanging around? You got a way of thinking from what you expose yourself to, what you're watching, what you're listening, who you're hanging around with. And I, I, I just think it's time for you to become a better custodian. We all need to become better custodians of what we're exposing our eyes, our ears, and our life to. Why? Because your exposure will determine how you think. If you don't expose yourself to the Word of God and you're exposing yourself to some weird way of thinking, then remember, whatever you're exposing yourself to is, will determine how you think. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So how you think came from what you're exposed to. Now listen to this. Your thinking now will determine how you feel. So you say, I feel depressed. Well, you want to deal with how you feel? Go back to deal with how, what you've been thinking. Because depression is this, this, this heaviness that's weighing heavily upon your thoughts, okay? So how you think determines your emotions. How you think determines how you feel. How you think determines how you feel. How you think determines how you feel. How you think determines, see how you feel is all wrapped up in how you've been thinking. 
So your thinking determines how you feel. Now, what, what happens if you don't change the negative way you're feeling? You're going to now go from how I feel determines the decisions I make. I guarantee you, the decisions that people make, when they are made out of negative emotions, they are bad decisions. Okay? So those negative feelings determine how you, how you feel. Uh, uh, your negative feelings determine the decisions you make. Your decisions will determine those actions. So whatever you end up doing is going to be caused by those negative um, uh, decisions. And a decision is an open door into reality. All right, so your actions determine your, um, your habits. And so what happens, you create a habit, and then the habit turns around and creates you. Man, look at what happen happens at each step. Then the habit takes you to your character. Um, character is what people and you will become to understand about who you are and what you do. Then your character will take you to the destination in life. So I am saying you don't have to stay there. You, you don't have to cancel your whole life and say, well, you know, look at me. I hate where I am and I don't know anything. I don't know what to do to get out of it. I'm telling you, you have authority and we're, we're here tonight to equip you with some understanding so you can start changing some things in your life. Um, but it's going to start with understanding how this thing works. See, Satan understands how it works. So he's trying to take full advantage of it. You need to understand that Satan calls a strategy meeting for all of our lives. And he comes up and develops a strategy to try to keep us from the will of God for our lives. I mean, to try to destroy us, to try to stop us from re reaching our destiny. And here I am sharing with you, I believe, a breakthrough revelation that's at least is going to do a couple of things. Get you out of this deception that you can't control your feelings. And then get you out of this deception and saying that you're stuck. Uh, and, and that's what feeling powerless is all about, feeling like you're stuck. And I'm telling you, you are not stuck. And so you're not stuck in a dead-end job. You're not stuck in, in a bad addiction. You're not stuck in anything if you can just realize how things work. And God has given us the grace to have the authority to take mastery over our emotions. So uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to get really, really excited, but I am really, really excited because, I mean, the light bulb goes on, ding, and you're like, I don't have to stay this way. I can actually do something about this based on what, what you're saying. You know, I saw this scripture in Deuteronomy 28. Uh, I'll turn there and read it to you. But if, if there's ever a doubt in your mind that you have authority over your emotions, let me read out of the Old Testament. Uh, and I know we live under a new covenant, but I want to show you how God responded to these emotions, even under the Old Testament dealing with the law. So here we are in Deuteronomy 28. And in verse 45, he says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee um, till thou be destroyed. Now notice why. Because thou hearkenest not unto the, you hearken not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Now notice why. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, that's an emotion, and uh, with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So he's saying that God is getting ready to judge them because of their emotions, because of wrong emotions. He said, because you didn't serve me with joyfulness and gladness for all the things that I have done. Look at verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Why? Because they didn't serve God with the right emotions. Now think with me for a moment. God would not be a just God if he judged somebody for not serving him with the right emotions and to say that there was nothing they can do about it. You know, it's basically saying God judged somebody for not being able to change their emotions and have the right emotions. That's a, he would be, not be a just God. 
So they had to have the ability to control their emotions or God would not have judged them. I mean, it, it's not right. You're going to say, well, I'm going to I'm going to judge these guys because they didn't they didn't choose to serve me with the right emotions. And that's what this is. This is talking about a choice. They had a choice to serve him with joyfulness. They had a choice to serve him with gladness, but they chose not to. They could have, but they chose not to. And as a result of it, in the old covenant, they were judged because they were chose not to um, choose the right emotions to serve God. So that just tells us right there, ladies and gentlemen, you have a choice. What they could have chosen to serve him with joyful and glad. They, they had a right to choose the, the, the feelings they wanted to serve God with, but they did not. And then you flip over here uh, immediately to, after you talk about, I talked about this, you go right over here to John chapter 14 and look at what he says here. St. Saint, Saint John chapter 14. Um, he says, let not your heart be troubled. How are you going to tell me let not my heart be troubled if I don't have control over whether, or whether I would feel like my heart to be troubled or not to be troubled? See, trouble can come, but it doesn't have to overcome. And some of you may be dealing with trouble right now. That trouble has triggered some negative emotions. Those negative emotions are now taking you places. It, this is a serious deal. This is a very, very serious deal. I, I don't want to run out of time, uh, but I want to, I definitely want to show you this before we log off. Um, go to James chapter one, James chapter one. I, I, I'm just telling you, we as Christian people can no longer ignore how we feel. You just can't well, I feel depressed and I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm just going to let it stay there. I'm going to show you the danger of not dealing with negative emotions and just letting them stay there. All right. So James chapter 1 and verse 13, he says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. He says, first of all, if you want to get out of this situation, you got to say, you know, when you got negative emotions, this is not God's will for my life. But secondly, he says, God is not the one sending you negative emotions. God is not the one uh, making you depressed, angry, self-pity. He's not doing any of that. Discouraged. Discouragement doesn't come from God. So it says, don't say that. God, that's not, God's not backing it up. Verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now listen to me carefully. Um, you study this word out uh, in context of the New Testament. The word lust is used in, in several scriptures. It's used in the book of James 4. It's used uh, in the New Testament referring to the Holy Spirit. But the way it's used in those other verses it indicates any type of strong emotion, any type of strong emotion. So if, if we read it like this, I want to show you what pops up here in verse 14. But every man is tempted, tested, or tried when he is drawn away of his own strong emotion and enticed. Drawn away of his own strong emotion and enticed enticed. All right, so here's the deal here. Um, he says something in, in verse 15. He says, then when lust or when a strong emotion has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. So he is saying that sin is conceived in, the, in a man's strong emotion. So strong emotions, according to the scripture here, and according to the context, he says, when he is drawn away, he's drawn away of his own strong emotions. Remember, emotions move you, and then you're enticed by your emotions. And then if you don't deal with those negative emotions, conception will take place. You will conceive in those emotions. So sin is conceived in emotions, like a baby is conceived in sexual activity, like Suicide is conceived in depression. Sin is conceived in emotions. Like suicide is going to be conceived in strong depression. 
So if you have that emotion of depression and you just let it stay there, you don't do anything about it, you can conceive suicide in that emotion and then end up giving birth to it. You have to have sex in order to have a baby. Well, not if you use birth control. Ah, no, no, no. I'm saying to have a baby, you have to have sex. So you conceive in sexual activity and then you give birth to what was conceived during the activity. So likewise, you conceive in those strong emotions and you don't deal with those emotions. And if you don't deal with it, it'll conceive something and then later on, it'll be born in your life. So if you look at your life and say, how did that get here? Go back, look at what, what kind of emotions, the negative ones you didn't deal with, and then look at what was conceived in that negative emotion. I'm telling you, man, this has got to be taught. This has got to be taught. It's got to be talked about because I'm thinking like a huge part of your life can change just by understanding this. Um, and, and rather than you spending time trying to change somebody else, you start changing you. Because watch it now, when you can't control your emotions, you're going you're gonna to attempt to try to control other people. But this, is, this, this can be life-changing. This can be something that can absolutely change your life. Let, let me read something. I wrote it in a little corner of a piece of paper the other week. Unbelief, discouragement, depression, they can all be conceived in emotions. How? If we refuse to give place to self-pity, if we refuse to give place to anger, if we refuse to give place to bitterness, if we refuse to give place to hurt, we won't conceive the failure that these emotions then bring to forth. So what are you giving place to in your emotion? You ha you have if that emotion is negative, you are going to be given place to conceive in something if you just ignore it. Oh, well, can't do anything about it. It is what it is. <laughs> if that's your attitude, get ready. You're about to give birth to something that you, you conceived. And for some people, they give birth to things and they're like, where did that come from? What happened? I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now what happened. And this is the authority that you can have through understanding, understanding God's word and understanding what God wants us to know. And I, I, I really, I think this is amazing to be able to see this so we can take authority over our lives. And then we can teach our children and our teenagers to take authority over their life and how they feel. But most of the world right now, they allow their feelings to govern their entire life. So I, I wanted to share that with you, but I, I don't want to talk the whole time. I want to kind of be interactive here now and just kind of talk about some things you're going through and see if I can kind of help you get through some of those things. So I'm going to go to the board and look at some questions and we'll talk about some of these questions. So how do you keep good emotions when you are believing for reconciliation in a previous marriage and it seems like nothing is happening? Okay, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of deal with that question in a certain way. I, I can never control people. People are always going to make their own decisions. I can't control them. I can only be responsible for my own emotions. So how do I keep good emotions when, when you're believing uh, for reconciliation in a previous marriage? All right, so that's a painful thing. Uh, you want it to make it happen, but you want to deal with yourself, and this is how you deal with yourself. There's a couple of scriptures, and like in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, it talks about if you're carnal-minded, then that'll produce death. If you're spiritual-minded, it'll produce life. John 6, 63 says, the word that I've spoken on you is spirit. So to answer your question, how do I keep good emotions when I'm going through a bad thing? Um, you have to get in the word. God's word, which is spiritual, will make you spiritual minded and spiritual mindedness leads to peace and life. So let's say you have a negative emotion come. You can achieve emotional stability by focusing in on what the word of God has to say. You're not gonna achieve emotional ability by focusing in on why won't he get back together with me? How come he doesn't want the marriage as much as I do? Okay, the word of God will produce a spiritual mind that will lead to peace and life, okay? Now, I'm not dealing with this from a psychological place where I'm just dealing with your feelings and your mentality. 
I'm dealing with this from a spiritual place. He's a psychologist doesn't include the, your, your spirit, man, and, and all that God has given to you and made it, given to you in authority with your spirit. So you take this, the word of God, which is spiritual, and you meditate on that word, and you get that word, and every time that bad thought comes or those bad feelings come, you attack it with the word of God. And when you do that, then it will give you the right feelings and the right emotions to go through those negative things. So remember now, if you don't control your emotions, you're going to attempt to try to control your, your ex and, you know, with all kinds of things, make them feel guilty, do all kinds of stuff. You got you to gotta value yourself and, you know, you got to keep good emotions by staying in the word of God and keeping your mind spiritual, be spiritual minded. Uh, and it doesn't seem like anything happens. Don't, don't look for what you're doing to control your emotions. Don't look for that to control somebody else, okay? That marriage may not ever come back together again, but at least you're going to be able to go through it and see a brighter side. Uh, if it does, it does. But you keep your mind sound by staying in the word. No word, no joy. No joy, no strength. No strength, you're weak. Everything's going to go back to how much time are you spending in God's word and God's presence. Okay, that was a great question. All right, the second one is, is how can one change their negative feelings about money or feeling of lack? Well, you know, let, let's just get this real straight. Negative emotions are not going to be changed by negative emotions <laughs> or negative feelings. The only way you're going to be able to take authority over these negative emotions as a Christian is to allow God's word to invade your thinking. Remember, you feel that way because you think a certain way. So you've got to, you've got to find out what the Bible says about it. It's called renewing the mind. Renewing the mind is exchanging your thoughts for God's thoughts, okay? Uh, renewing the mind is not a one-time event. It's a lifetime process. So what are your feelings, uh, your negative feelings about money? Well, get in the Word of God and find out what the Word has to say about it. And, you know, why would you, you know, why are you feeling negative about it? Because you expose yourself to something, uh, probably that was incorrect, and that determined your thinking about it. And then the way you thought about it determined your emotions, and then you started making a lot of emotional decisions about how to spend money. And you have to get in the Word and, and get, get good teaching that can help you to think differently according to God's Word. So our job is not to try to change God's Word, but to allow God's Word to change how we think. And we need to renew our mind and think differently concerning those things we had negative feelings about. And, and I'm saying, and here's how you do it. it yeah, listen. To try to handle this carnally, a carnal mind, what is it? What is carnality? Carnality is being dominated by your senses. Carnality is mean you're dominated by what you see, you're dominated by what you hear, you're dominated by what you say. Uh, you're not going to change negative thoughts being dominated by a carnal mind or carnal thinking. As goes your mindset, that will now determine your emotion set, your feeling set. So the key is if you're going to want to, if you're going to, attack how the negative feelings you got to attack the negative thinking and if you're going to attack the negative thinking you got to see the exposure that gave you the negative thinking and expose yourself to the word of God that will change your thinking that'll change the way you feel okay that's how that works you you what have I been exposed to to give me the way I think to give me this bad feelings to make these bad things let's get in the word expose ourselves to the word the word now uh, it gives us the right kind of thinking. The right kind of thinking now makes us feel right and then decisions right all the way down to the right destination. But it's going to be based in the word of God as a Christian. So how can you control your emotions in the area of eating? Same way. Same way. Their, their feelings, no matter what it's attacking, their feelings. You know, my wife told me, she said, you know, when she said, because you've been teaching on these emotions, I applied it to my diet. She says, I'm eating like I'm supposed to eat now. Because I've taken authority over how I feel about eating and I'm exposing myself to the right information. I'm exposing myself to what the word of God has to say. I'm changing the way I think about eating. Now I change how I feel about eating. And in, 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 instead of you becoming an emotional eater, uh, your thinking has been adjusted. 
your, what you've exposed yourself to has been adjusted and that will affect, will, will affect your emotions. How does, this how, does this, and how does this work in the area of anxiety? Well, the Bible says, uh, be anxious for nothing. Philippians chapter four, I believe. Be anxious for nothing, uh, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So first of all, you have to know it's the will of God for you not to be anxious, all right? So what do I do instead of going around and being anxious and being worried? I again, focus on the word God. He says, be thankful and with prayer and with thanksgiving. So whatever I'm anxious about, again, it's about changing my thinking. I, I'm anxious because of what I've been thinking. I'm thinking that way because of what I've been exposed to. I, I think what we're seeing in, in our time right now is, is there's such a powerful, powerful asset called the word of God that when we start taking advantage of that powerful asset, it starts affecting our thinking, our feelings. It starts affecting our whole life. Um, so we're looking for other things to kind of see if we can replace that. And it's, it's not going to work until you understand uh, the asset that you've been given in the word of God and begin to apply it in your life. And, you, and you'll see how to do that. Well, how do I control my emotions during a time of grief? Again, we can take all of these different situations that come up and the answer is still going to be the same. Uh, you're going to be in grief because of how you thought about that situation that causes grief based on what you've been exposed to. For example, I'm exposed to a family that, or a church or friends that when somebody dies, you know, I, I get into grief and I feel that way and I stay that way. But how many times have we been exposed to the word? And the word tells us, you know, precious is the death of a person and how to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And, and yes, it'll hurt, but you can still take what you know about death from God's word and joy comes from what you know. The feeling of joy comes from what you know. I, I've, I've gone to some funerals and I knew the people, I knew their life was together. They were born again Christians. They were on their way to heaven. I, 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 it was painful that they left because I, I won't have an opportunity to be with them again. But I had joy because of what I knew. I knew it wasn't over with. I knew that there was a better life on the other side. And so I didn't see it as a loss. I didn't lose them when they died. Um, they just, you know, they, they left for a moment. <laughs> they, in other words, I didn't lose them because I know exactly where they are. To be absent from the body as a Christian is to be present with the Lord. So. You're not lost. Yeah, somebody says, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry you lost your grandmother. She's not lost. I know exactly where she is. She's present with the Lord. That alone begins to restructure the way you think. It begins to tackle grief because of what you know. And so what happens if you got wrong teaching from the past and that's determined your thinking, which now determines how you feel. So no matter what the situation is, you still have the same um, progression to make those necessary changes. Um, how do you take control over your emotions without making it your own works and relying on self-effort? Listen, this has nothing to do, sometimes we really confuse the little own work stuff. Self-effort and your own works, dealing with the finished works of Jesus, that's one thing. Understanding how life works and exercising the authority that God has given you in that area, that's another thing. If you never take authority over your emotions because you're sitting there waiting on Jesus to do it, you've forgotten that grace has given you the authority to take charge over your emotions. You have authority by the grace of God, but you still have to use it. It's like God says, I've given you power. And uh, well, let's just, let's just do something in the natural. Your power company, has sent power to your house. And then you call them every night to, to see if somebody can come and flip the switch. You, you got the power, you got to flip the switch. Well, God's given you authority by grace. You didn't earn it, you didn't deserve it, but by the grace of God, you have authority, but you still have to flip the switch. So if you have negative emotions and God has given you the authority over those emotions, then if you don't do anything about it, I mean, nothing's going to be done and you're going to sit there and suffer because you think it's self-effort. 
um, we're not talking about self-effort in exercising the authority that's been given to you by grace. We're talking about you trying to be made righteous through your own efforts, or you trying to have the finished works of Jesus through your own efforts, or you trying to have authority through your own efforts. So don't get that confused with it. There are spiritual laws and principles that you have been authorized to operate, and if you don't turn them on, then you'll spend all your life with them not being on. Okay, so how do I, how do I know, let's see how much time I got, about five minutes. How do I know if it's my emotions leading me or God leading me to do something? The word, the word of God, that's how you know. See, uh, your emotions are, if your emotions are not godly, they're gonna begin to take you to a place that doesn't line up with God's word. Carnal mindedness equals death. But if your emotions are godly, those are godly emotions, they will begin to take you to where you need to be. And here's another thing. If, you're, if those emotions can't be controlled, if they're controlling you, that, that's, not, that's not God leading you. God has given you the gift of self-control. And with the gift of self-control, it takes you to the will of God for your life. I tell you how you know, ultimately, if you end up in a destination you don't want to be in, now you know that was not God, <laughs> you know? So... Um, you, for, let me give you another example. Somebody says, well, I, I know God loves me. And I say, how do you know God loves you? Well, I feel like he loves me. Well, wait a minute. What if you wake up one morning and you don't feel like God loves you? Does it mean he no longer loves you? No. You know God loves you because the word says that God loves you. So we have to make up our mind to live our lives by the word of God that never changes instead of by emotions that change. That's a good question requires a lot more study. Uh, let's see. Can you please repeat those steps, uh, those eight steps to create the life you want? Okay, be glad to. You, what you're exposed to will determine your thinking. The thinking will determine your feelings or your emotions. Your feelings will determine your decisions. Your decisions will determine your actions. Your actions will determine your habits. Your habits will determine your character. Your character will determine your destination in life. Now, if you don't like your destination, just, just fix everything by going in the reverse. If you don't like your destination, change your character. If you don't like your character, change your habits. If you don't like your habits, change your actions. If you don't like your actions, change your decisions. If you don't like your decisions, change your emotions. If you don't like your emotions, change the way you think. If you don't like the way you think, change what you're being exposed to. Can you see this, man? This is like, yeah, amen. Hey, I wanna pause for a moment and remind those of you online, join me. Listen, when we go to Los Angeles, that's the last change experience for the year. We are going to, it's gonna, you're going to be so excited. I'm going to feed you, Taff and I are going to feed you so much word, you're going to feel like biting the back out of the chair in front of you. So register now. You know, the cost of the meeting is no charge, but you do have to register. So we'll know, you know, who's coming and make sure we got enough seats. So it's the 2018 Change Experience, Los Angeles, California. That's Friday, November the 2nd, November the 2nd. We get the privilege of having this last change experience at the Crenshaw Christian Center, the Faith Dome in Los Angeles, California. The sessions uh, will be one day, but we'll have three sessions. I'll start off at 10 a.m. Taffy's going to do a radical uh, uh, um, uh, teaching on, on um, uh, equality, <laughs> excuse me, biblical equality at 2 o'clock. And that's, that's a message. I mean, that is, that'll change your relationships like nobody's business, man. Two o'clock and then seven o'clock, uh, I'll come in and, and, and get real radical. It's going to be an amazing meeting and we're just going to let, just pour it out. We're going to try to give you so much word that it'll keep you for the next six, seven months. And uh, if you want to register right now, you can text LA2018 to 51555. That's LA, text LA to 2018 to uh, text LA 2018 to 51555 and you can register right now do it right now bring your friends tell your folks make a night out of it 
It's going to be amazing. Now, hey, remember, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you, this is, these change experiences have been just amazing. The last one we did was in New York. It has been life changing. We, we constantly talk to people that say, oh my God, I never knew that. My whole life has changed. You, get, you really get a chance to see the power of God's word as it begins to enlighten a person and completely change them. And that's why we call it a change experience. You will experience change. So if there are areas of your life and you're needing some change and you're wanting some change, hang out with Taffy and I for uh, this, uh, yeah, this LA change experience. And uh, that's November the 2nd. And it's going to be an amazing, amazing time. Um, you know, one of the reasons that we, we are doing these change experiences again is for our partners and for our friends, people that are not near one of our churches. We don't want to forget our partners and friends. So we just made our mind up. We're going to get back into the saddle and do what we used to do. So um, next year, 2019, we've got 11 of these change experiences planned for all over the country. And we also do international change experiences. And it's an awesome time. It's, we did one in South Africa, uh, Johannesburg this past year. That was so awesome. It was amazing. Uh, we've gone to Angola to do these meetings, Ghana to do these meetings. And we're, we're realizing, man, we're all over the world doing change experiences. And we realize that we stopped doing them in the United States. So this year, this past year, 2018, we, we just decided to get them to stir it back up. And it has been an amazing year. So Los Angeles, California, November the 2nd, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 7 o'clock p.m. You can register by texting LA2018 to 51555. So, hey, I hope, I hope that something clicked on the inside of you tonight. I, I pray that, you know, you're looking at your life, you're looking at how your emotions have been doing things, and you're saying, I'm done with this. I'm, I'm tired of living this way. I'm tired of waking up feeling depressed, going to bed depressed. You can, you can take authority over that, and all will be well with you. Um, I enjoy doing these uh, streams, and um, I don't have any friends with me today, but, you know, every now and then I'll invite some people to be with me, and we're going to see you again. And so thank you for taking your time to watch this to stay up a couple of times all my instagram folks who came over to watch this i pray it challenged you i'm working on this series i'm i think i'm doing like part four or five this weekend and uh, i'm going to put a really good series together on how to deal with your emotions and as soon as it's available we'll we'll let you know so you can get in there and feed on the word of god and make a mark or allow god to make a mark that cannot be erased god bless you have an epic, epic Friday and weekend and make your plans right now. Put it on your calendar to join us in L.A. for the 2018 Change Experience. We love you. We appreciate you. And remember, in all of your getting, get understanding. We'll see you soon.